Hey guys, this is Magic here, and I am amped about this overlooked but awesome card because it is utter madness. Let me just put it this way. Can you think of a card that doesn't have a silver border? It's not from like unglued or unhinged. Um, you know, it it's a legal card. It was actually printed in a real set. It was legal at one time, but it's currently banned in basically every single format. Now, if you're one of the uh, clever people out there, you're probably thinking, oh, it's Chaos Orb, isn't it? Well, it isn't, but let's look at Chaos Orb for a second because this card's hilarious. So <laughs> you would bring it out for two. It's a mono artifact. I mean, boy, did they name stuff weird back then. And um, you would pay one generic, flip Chaos Orb onto the playing area from a height of at least one foot, Chaos Orb must turn completely over at least once, or it is discarded with no effect. When Chaos Orb lands, any cards in play that it touches are destroyed, as is Chaos Orb. Now you guys know that I'm a big proponent of adding, uh, quote, physical challenges to, like, official streamed tournaments. Um, I was thinking more Nickelodeon-style stuff, maybe some obstacle courses, you know, like some old-school 90s stuff, maybe add in some American Gladiators kind of stuff. And if you're like, oh, that's stupid, you know damn well you would watch that stream, so I guess I'm right. You know you would watch LSV climb on a little one-foot bicycle and try and pedal it around a bunch of little cones and stuff. I mean, come on. Maybe Travis would be there chucking, like, slime-filled water balloons at him the whole time. I would watch the hell out of that, and I hate magic coverage. So this would be kind of starting small, and and I mean this card came out in '93, so yeah, starting might not be quite the right uh, right term for the modern day Magic. Um, but this just seems fun. I mean, it it's so not serious, and uh, I heard a rumor that the reason they took it out of the game was not because. Well, okay, there's actually two reasons. There's the real reason, and then there's the secondary reason. I gotta cover both. First, allegedly people with some kind of mobility problem or movement problem, muscular problem, something like that, or like no hands or whatever that could still manipulate cards in play, it wasn't fair to them because it was too hard for them to perform the action. Uh, that's a rumor. The, the reason that I know for sure is because somebody ripped up this card <laughs> into pieces at a tournament and just kind of sprinkle slash flipped it. I don't know how that took place, but they hit just about everything on the damn field. Uh, so they called the judge over and they're like, well, he ripped up the card is no longer a valid card, blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, it turns out it is. So he did that to almost everybody at the tournament, allegedly. Uh, so the story goes. I'm not sure about the truthfulness of this. But I do know that some form of this story is true because, well, I'd like to introduce you to Chaos Confetti from Unglued. Or, yeah, no... It was an unglued or unhand. I don't forget which one's the horseshoe and which one's the egg. Not really important. But um, this was the joke set that just made fun of all kinds of like awesome dank memes in the magic world. Um, <laughs> so Chaos Confetti says, uh, tear Chaos Confetti into pieces, throw the pieces onto the play area from a distance of at least five feet, destroy each card in play that a piece touches, remove the pieces from the game afterwards. So clearly they were making fun of an event that actually happened. I mean, so the story goes. I'm sure you could look it up and find out, like, who actually did this, too. In fact, I'm not even sure what to think when I read the flavor text on the bottom of Chaos Confetti. It says, and you thought that was just an urban legend. So, I mean, are they, are they confirming that that actually happened? Or... Are they, like, stating that it was just an urban legend and they're not sure if it really happened at a tournament? I don't know. And by I don't know, I mean I'm too lazy to Google it and I'm already recording this, so screw it. I mean, it's 2017. When somebody says, I don't know, it j just translated to I'm too lazy. But what if I told you there's another version of Chaos Orb? And what if you told me in response, yes, Des, I know that. I played when Legends was legal. But for quite a few of you who are probably actually younger than the set Legends, oh, there's another version. <laughs> We're talking about the overlooked but awesome card, although, <laughs> asterisk, you can't play this in anything, Falling Star. 
Flip Falling Star onto the play area from a height of at least one foot. Falling Star deals three damage to each creature it lands on. Tap all creatures dealt damage by Falling Star. If Falling Star doesn't turn completely over at least once during the flip, you suck. Just kidding, it says it has no effect. Oh, but wait. The silliness doesn't end there. Here's the card rulings. I feel stupider just reading these. It must flip like a coin and not like a frisbee. Where do I even start with this damn thing? First of all, why the hell is this ruling from October 4th, 2004? I remember there was a, a glitch with the ruling dates, but I don't think that was the cutoff. So was this card actually legal until after October 2004? And also, do they really think their customers are too stupid to know what like horizontally versus vertically means or maybe start naming an axis or just any other geometric description? Like what if... Somebody in some country doesn't have something called a frisbee. I mean, England calls everything the wrong name. I'd be shocked if they have something called a frisbee and not a, a discus or something. In fact, they probably call it a biscuit over there. They call everything a damn biscuit. Now, this one's actually a nice ruling. Only cards touched when it stops moving are affected, not ones touched while it is moving. Because you could honestly flip it and get that thing sliding like, like, you know, like a really good, like, slippery table poker deal. Like, I can I can hit them cards on the table and just zoom six feet straight across it. So I could see why they wanted to take a player's card-throwing aiming ability out of the game <laughs> and just replace it with just cognitive decisions. <laughs> but still, how fun would this have been? Oh my god, you guys need to just make this card legal in your playgroup. This card is amazing. You know what I kept saying about Dungeons and Dragons and most other similar tabletop games of Gamma World? What we need is to get finger-mounted rubber bands. Okay, I mean, there's moving around on a grid and following the rules and using math and geometry and, and logic and, you know, all that. And then there's, like, I want to shoot this. It all stems from a game a long time ago, and if anybody knows what the name of this game is, like, I will virtually hug you. Unless you think it's weird, then I'll just virtually thank you. So there's this game I played when I was, like, 12 it was at my friend's house and it was like the greatest thing i've ever seen i was like losing my damn mind over this game so they have like little um um ballistas i guess you'd call them um you know big giant crossbows that fire like four foot long telephone poles you know basically that's a medieval weapon it, it might be pre-medieval actually regardless um you set up a whole bunch of those and you tried to knock down the other person's uh units like in the little castle windows and stuff and you had to set it up like exactly three or four feet away or something with like a little measuring tape or whatever and i think like you got to roll a die to see how many shots you got or something like that it was like so freaking cool it combined a board game and units and strategy and, and dice and attacks and numbers with actual physical ability and aiming, and they kind of resembled guns, and I've been a gun freak since I was about four. I don't care if it's a Nerf gun, one of those crappy little ping pong ball guns, man, if it fired a projectile, I was way too into it. Like, I'm surprised my parents didn't seek therapy for me. Well, I mean, for, for that specifically. So this is kind of like that. I mean, should you be able to use a BB gun against Dungeons & Dragons miniatures? Ask your DM. But sometimes adding like a physical component and like aiming in three dimensions and the real world and player skill into a game is actually kind of cool. And I think that's what they were going for in the first place. And I have to applaud Wizards for at least trying it. And then I have to also applaud them for getting rid of it because it's, it's completely stupid. It's just like unfair, dumb, and like if you're playing outside it probably wouldn't work because, well, all of your cards will blow away. Just don't play outside. But there's just so much wrong with this, but you know, it was cool of them to at least try, and that is why this got overlooked but awesome. Also, it was recommended by one of my patrons, Mr. Thomas. And boy was he right, this is one of the most awesome cards that has ever been printed. Like, this is like Splendid Genesis level crazy. Which, by the way, if you've never heard of the card Splendid Genesis, I don't blame you. Look it up. It's a bit odd. Oh, and uh, you won't exactly find it on the Gatherer website either. Yeah, and you probably won't find it on eBay considering it's about $30,000. So hey, talk to your playgroup, ask if you can start, you know, throwing Falling Star and Chaos Orb into your commander deck. If you guys approve it for casual play, hey, you make the rules. Wizards doesn't. So have fun with this one, and I'll see you guys next video. 